Hello, welcome to the North Star Controller Device Profile Entries Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After successfully completing this learning byte, you will be able to create and manage North Star Controller Device Profile Entries. The North Star Controller platform uses device profile entries for many purposes. They can be used to test connectivity or verify connectivity to the nodes that make up your network. The settings on device profile entries can be used to provision label switch paths in the, in the case of NetConf, provision label switch paths. Device profile entries are also required to allow the North Star controller to collect detailed configuration and status information about the components that make up your network. Device profile entries are also used to allow an archive of your network to be created that can be used inside of the North Star Planner application. So they're key to performing many functions inside of the North Star controller environment. To create them from the more options menu administrator option we select device profile from the administration menu and by default device profile entries aren't created you must perform actions to actually have them appear in the interface probably the simplest way to create device profile entries is there is a sync with the live network option clicking that instructs the north star controller to analyze the contents of the traffic engineering database the ted and so it uses the information about the nodes in that traffic engineering database to automatically create the device profile entries. Now, not all of the required information for a device profile entry is discovered or stored in a TED. For example, in the network I'm going to use for our demonstration, it's an OSPF network. And, and OSPF does not place a node's host name inside of the traffic engineering database. That information is not distributed. In an ISIS network, it is. And so syncing with the live network on an ISIS network will create device profile entries from the traffic engineering database information, and it will automatically populate the name field, you know, the host name of the, the node, right? But in an OSPF network, that information is not available. So, you know, creating them is one thing, but then you're going to have to modify and personalize them so they meet the, the needs of your organization. So you might have to go in and add things like host name, maybe specify a vendor type, you know, manually configure a management IP address, right? Uh, enable different management protocols like SNMP or NetConf or, or, or PSEP, you know, configuration. So, you know, creating them is one thing. You can also click the add button if you want to manually create device profile entries. I'm going to connect to the North Star Controller Administrator interface now and, and we'll perform some of these functions. This is the North Star Controller Administrative Interface. I'm going to use the More Options menu to select Administration. And then Device Profile from the Administration menu. And by default, there are no device profile entries created. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, the simplest way to create them is to sync with the live network. And that, again, will crawl the traffic engineering database and put information about the nodes, the devices that are actually discovered in the TED. So, and again, this is an OSPF network, so there are some things that can be discovered, but things like the host name just simply aren't present in that data set. So I can modify an entry and fill out things such as the host name of the platform, modify or set a device IP address or a management IP address when the North Star controller connects to a platform to test connectivity or to provision you know, settings or discover settings on a node, it connects using the management IP address by default. If that's not available, it then would try the device IP field. So, so specify those values. If this is an MPLS ingress node and I'm going to provision label switch paths using the PSEP protocol, I can specify the IP address that I want this node to use for PSEP connectivity. Um, I can specify a vendor field as part of the device discovery and device collection process that a North Star controller can perform, it, it can connect to a platform and execute a series of CLI commands, 
Well, it needs to use the correct CLI commands for a particular vendor, right? So you want to select, for example, this is a virtual MX platform from Juniper. So if the North Star controller connects, I need, I need it to execute Juniper specific CLI commands, right? Uh, other some you know other information just optional you know, model OS things like that. Now for the North Star controller to connect to a platform at some point and perform functions, execute CLI commands, it will need credentials. Now one thing I want you to understand that I've seen, it, it just seems maybe it's just something I'm doing wrong, but I'll, I'll set this and then I'll I'll save it right. And then if I go back in there sometimes, it seems like every once in a while I'll lose that password. So kind of be careful of that and check that. So, so you can specify any credentials the North Star controller can use to connect to a, a particular node in your network. There's an access tab where you can specify you know, secure shell settings. Uh, enabling NetConf is something that's very commonly done to allow the North Star controller to provision NetConf provision label switch paths to an MPLS ingress router and also to use NetConf to discover settings on a device, right? The PSAP protocol that's used to provision label switch paths from a North Star controller to a particular node uh, supports authentication and encryption of the, of, of the communication between the North Star controller and the, the ingress node. So you would specify a string in that local device's configuration file that would match the value that you set here. Also, again, the North Star controller can use the SNMP protocol to collect data about a platform, right? The status of, of tunnels and the, you know, the statistics on interfaces. I can I can collect that data, but I need the correct values here, the correct SNMP values that match the values set on a particular node. And then you're also able to store any kind of personalized information that your organization finds useful. You can select the plus and and name an, an attribute and provide a value for it. So it's just an additional storage location for for your organization's important information about a particular node. So, so that's a device profile entry. When I, when I make any modifications to it, I can click the modify button. And then for the North Star controller to remember all this, I need to click the save changes button. You can see all the text is red. That's because this, all this information has just recently been learned by analyzing the traffic engineering database or any object that you modify will appear red until you click the Save Changes button. And now I know the information that was discovered or modified has been saved inside a database on the North Star controller. So that's a little bit of information about device profile entries and their creation and modification. In this learning byte, we created and managed North Star controller device profile entries. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.